What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today I want to talk about some of the struggles and difficulties that I've had without a computer science degree in this industry. All right, so before we get started, as always, if you're into web development, coding, DevOps, just conquering life in general, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Lots of great videos are planned. For 2020. Now, before we get started, just a quick note before I get comments about being in my car. The last time I was in my car, I had a lot of people like, hey, dude, why are you in your car? Well, I'm in my car today because I have a bunch of kids, a bunch of lovely kids, and it's Saturday, and I don't want to tell them to go outside or keep it down or anything like that. So I'm going to let them run wild, and I'm going to come out to the car and do my video. So I learned to code at 34 years old. I've been in the industry since. And I want to talk today about some of the struggles I've had with not having a computer science degree. Now, not struggles as in getting a job, but some of the challenges I've faced in a job not having that foundation. So before I can talk about my struggles, we have to talk about the computer science degree itself. Do you need a computer science degree to get into the industry today? The answer is no. Of course you don't. There's tons of videos out there about this, and I think all of the video videos agree with me that you don't need a computer science degree in 2020. I mean, it's turned into kind of a trade school approach now. There's coding boot camps, there's free code camp, there's tons of stuff online, tons of places to learn. All you have to do is learn it, build up a portfolio, and prove to somebody that you can code, and they'll give you a job. Now, if you do have the computer science degree, that looks good on your resume and may, give, may, and may make it easier to get in the door, but it's not a requirement to get into the industry. Even big companies out there, Google, those companies don't require a computer science degree to get a job. So you don't need one. In fact, I would say that unless you're young and you're going to college anyway at that age, you probably shouldn't go back and get a full computer science degree. It's expensive, takes a lot of time, and you don't really need it. You don't really need all the other stuff you have to take, and you don't need that degree to get the job. But if you are young and you're going into college, that's the best degree. Don't get anything else, get a computer science degree. That being said, there are lots of things in that degree program that will put you ahead of others. So if you get a computer science degree, you get in the job, and then somebody is self-taught, they get in the job, you're gonna be ahead of them, probably, because you have a really well-rounded, kind of professionally trained degree showing that you have knowledge in a lot of the stuff that they may not have learned yet. And that's kind of what happened to me. So I started out freelancing. So I learned how to code. I actually went to a boot camp, but started picking up jobs during it and dropped out about halfway. I got a video about this if you want to watch it. But um, I started picking up work and I ended up freelancing for about two years. Now, you don't need a computer science degree at all to freelance. What I did was I just learned WordPress, a little PHP, a little JavaScript, and uh, I was able to do it for two years pretty successfully. I worked for small businesses and I worked for agencies. I did a lot of agency work. So I learned a lot on the job as I went. But if you're freelancing, you, you don't have to have a computer science degree. You just have to meet the need of the client that's paying you to do something for them. So I did that for about two years. Then I finally said, hey, I'm gonna get into the corporate software world. So I got a job with a company out of DC that was contracted to work on golf.com. So I was there about six months, and it was, again, WordPress, but it was a lot more in depth. There was WordPress, there was like a Ruby on Rails side apps that pulled in data from Sports Center or somewhere like that. And then there was like databases, things like that. But still for this, I didn't need a computer science degree. I knew Git, I knew how to work with the team. And when they gave me jobs to do, I just did it. And it was just coding. Every day was coding. There were some container Kubernetes, CI/CD stuff going on, but they had a DevOps team. I didn't have to worry about that. So no computer science degree there. Didn't need it. So a little less than a year ago, I started with the company I'm currently with. Now this company posed a whole nother issue. And this is where the computer science degree thing really shines and where I kind of fell behind a little bit. Because we're 100% in Microsoft Azure. We're in the cloud. Now, once you get in the cloud, you have infrastructure, you have networking, you have all of these computer components that if you spent all of your time learning programming and how to build websites and apps and stuff, you kind of neglected this area. If you had a computer science degree, you at least did some courses on this, you're familiar with it. But for me, I was really lacking in this. 
And just a side note, these things are going to differ for everybody. You may be really well versed in networking or you may know computers really well to where this isn't your problem, but you may have some other problem that pops up. So just be aware of that. For me, it was a couple of things. Number one, it was infrastructure. So I got in there and I started, you know, people started sending me diagrams like, hey, we got this VNet. We got a, a front end subnet, a back end subnet. I'm like, whoa, subnets, what is, what is that? You know, that's not in, in programming, right? And we got a load balancer. We got these IP address ranges. Maybe we got an app gateway and we got this going here and this. And I looked at that chart. I was like, man. And then they said, hey, Travis, uh, we're going to have some virtual machines too. Um, see if you can do a little research, figure out how many vCPUs we need, you know, how much RAM, these kind of things. I was like, vCPU, what is that? You got RAM, you got throughput, you got things like this that I just was not familiar with. So if you go and look up any computer science degree program out there and look at the courses, they're going to have a computer infrastructure course, networking course, these kind of things. So this is an area you may be lacking in because I surely was deficient in it. But I've since come up to speed pretty nicely on it. I'll talk about that in a minute. Another area that I really lacked in was networking. Like to this day, networking is like one of my worst things because it's this huge monstrosity of all of these things that I just don't know. So for instance, one day at work, they decided, hey, this Wi-Fi keeps messing up. We're going to run some cables. We're going to redo this and that. We're going to run some cables. Everybody's going to plug up. That's great. So a couple of guys were like, hey, let's go fix this. I was like, yeah, let's go. And so we went in this room and everybody started reconfiguring the, the router and there's all this talk about routers and switches and hubs. And like, I might have some basic knowledge of that, but it went way over my head and I slowly backed out the room and disappeared. And, um, and since then we've hired a couple of network guys and when they start talking, it just goes over my head. Even things like IP addresses with the slash 24 slash 16, those things, I was so lost. I don't know what that is. You know, and VNet peering and all of these things was just confusing to me. The computer science guys came in there and they, you know, some of them tell you sometimes, like, I don't remember anything. I was a waste or something. But they retain a lot of that stuff. You have to do so much preparation in there and so much theory and stuff that that stuff's ingrained in your brain. So these guys automatically knew what these terms were. They knew what to do. Me, I didn't because I, I focused on the programming stuff. And finally, another thing I lacked in was just general knowledge because people would get to talking and they would be using acronyms and things that weren't really related to my programming background. And it just took me a while to catch up. Things like security practices, Linux stuff like Netstat and all of these different commands to check certain things that I had never heard of. In fact, I had never used Linux before starting this job. I mean, I've been a Mac guy, so I'm a little familiar with a little bit, but Linux is a whole different world. Since then, I've come up to speed. I love it, but I was really lacking in that too. So what is my point in all this? My point in this is to share with you that you don't need a computer science degree, but you are going to have to do a little extra homework to come up to par with these other guys that have it. And it's easily doable. And let me speak to that for a minute. How do you do that? Here's how you don't do that. You don't go and start studying all of the theory underneath all of this stuff. Man, you don't need that in the real world. So if you don't know what those slashes are at the end of IP addresses, don't go study things like octets and binary and things like that to figure out how it's all translated. Just know that if you have a slash 24, that means 24 bits. Okay, there's four, there's four numbers there, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. .0. Just know that 24 bits are going to be used. That's going to be your address. You can't mess with that. You can only change that last digit. If it's 16, two are going to be set. You can set two and assign it to different resources with those last two numbers being changed. Just know that much. You don't need to know all, all of the things behind it. That's how I was able to keep step with these guys and girls. So don't go learning all the theory. There's a couple of computer science books out there that are like there to teach people that didn't get the computer science degree. Like I think there's a book called The Imposter's Handbook. And I flipped through that and it's like all algorithms and things like that. Something you might have to pass in your interview, but something that you would never use again. Some of the other books go into so much theory. You don't need all of that. 
You need to understand this stuff on the surface and be able to deal with them on a daily basis. You don't have to know how the computer handles them way down in this deep level. So if you don't have a computer science degree, keep charging ahead. You have no worries. Just realize that things are going to come up every now and then that you're going to be baffled on because you studied programming. You're going to be baffled on these things and you're going to have to learn them. And when you do learn them, learn them on the surface, learn it well enough to be able to explain it to someone, but don't try to go so deep that you stop progressing. Enjoy the ride. So hey guys, I hope this was helpful. I don't really have any big, huge takeaways from this. I just wanted to share some of my struggles and some of the challenges I faced with it. And just be aware that your own different types of struggles for you self-taught people will pop up every now and then. Be prepared for it and you'll do great. So hey, if you've had any struggles that you faced without having a computer science degree, being self-taught and everything, List it below. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear stories from other self-taught developers. And again, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.